Right, this is the seventh time we've tried to shoot this intro because I keep muttering and stuttering. I'm out of practice a little bit. This is episode 30 something, I think it's 34. We're in Henley on Thames, and uh, this is a new job. Let's go and have a look. Oh. I've not even seen the drawings for this plot, neither's Chris. And the reason being, a lot of people ask me, you've got a car coming in the middle of the road. Oh, it's going the other way. Other way. A lot of Real people way. ask me, how you price? And I'll, I'll openly say we use a QS, right? Now, our QS, one of the benefits is that our QS does work for other builders, right? He rang us up, said, do you want to price a house in Henley? I said yes. And then he, he priced it, I didn't even get involved. Sorted the numbers out with, a, with, a, with our clock, this new client. The clients rang up and said the start date is X, alright? I ain't got involved. The QS has done the numbers, we've just turned up to build it. We can build anything, we believe. Alright, so it doesn't really matter. I've just said to the client, can we have some drawings so I can see what we're building? Come and have a look, because we're not actually starting a superstructure today. The ground workers are here, they've piled it, and we're doing some retaining walls. It's Henley Regatta weekend, alright? So we are not going to be hanging around today because we get caught in all the traffic. Come on, Rob. Over. All right. So, as you can see, they're piled, all right? So all these are going to get snipped, and they're going to put a ring beam all the way around, block and beam it, and then we'll come back and set it out. We've got a brickwork substructure, all right, up to DPC. There's block work and rendered above that just for the minute, just setting out, try not to get hit by the digger, just setting out these retaining walls that, because uh, obviously the ground's a lot higher next door. Once you have the ground for the next door, that's their driveway. So putting these retainers in, we've got five courses flat, I'm running around like a lunatic, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. We've got five courses flat, and then it goes to face work, because that's uh, ground level, all right? But we haven't got the bricks here, Chris and I just jumped in here. For, I'm out of retirement for one day only. Rob's laughing. They've been taking the piss out of me because I think I look ill, right? Been out in the sun. You don't get my son sat me on a laptop. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna rattle these in. There's no bricks here. Job and knock. Get away. Nice, easy down on Friday. Yes. Um, not you. Rob's gonna <laughs> stay and load out. Um, I'm also gonna tell you about our three biggest mistakes. All right. How do you use that trail? You give me a pointer. You show me how to use I'll it. Show you how do you a use it? How's it going? How's it go? That's it. Turn her over. Turn her over. Been that long. It's like riding the bike. Yeah. Yeah. Can still do it. Can you see me? Yeah. Am I a bit pasty? I've got a t-shirt on. You do look. You got a red head. I'm melting, mate. I'm actually. On this screen, you have not. Not so bad when you look at it. I'm melting, mate. I'm burning the winter in the shade. Gin, you know. So listen. One of our biggest mistakes today, I think it's really important to put it out there. Yeah, come here, sorry. Is, uh, get out of it. You look like a big tomato there. Are you me or Chris? Chris. Oh. Yeah, so one of the, yeah, one of the biggest mistakes, yeah. shout out, I'm trying to do a video. One of the biggest mistakes we've made today is trying to be everything to everybody. I spoke to a couple of people last week and I spoke to Stu Compton about it when I've done his podcast. That if you go niche, you gain traction, right? For example, if you do, if you say we are a heritage brickwork contractor, you're going to gain traction a lot quicker than if you say we do heritage new build extensions, garden walls, feature work. Like you can't be everything to everybody. Not at the start, anyway. If you're starting a company, be specific and be niche. We set this up so we are high-end prestige. We do do other stuff like extensions and walls and stuff. But actually, I'm sweating, man. Yeah, right. Actually, we do that off the back of this. So our biggest, one of our biggest mistakes trying to be everything to everybody and in turn you leave a lot of money on the table that's my experience on that one that's number one Chris has demoted me to the shovel so it reckons I'm not up to it now we in oh and on a separate note as well I've just seen a lovely little potential building plot over the road so I'm gonna be contacting them I spent it all last week sending out letters and um, contacting vendors about buying plots of land so fingers crossed that will come to fruition there's another one I've got my eye on um, one of the other things 
I wish you had done differently. Is like we were a busy fool for a long time. So I, I, we went in cheap to win work to start with, and we ended up pretty cheap. Everybody saying yes. There's a bit of a balance to be struck because obviously, if you haven't started your company yet, you do need to get in with people. And to do that, you need to be very competitive. There's a difference to, between being competitive and being cheap. We were, I, I, when I first set up, I was a busy fool, man. Like I had loads of work, I was employing loads of lads from the pub and that, which created its own problems. And uh, you end up not making a lot of money, being stressed out, being pulled in 100 different directions, and having to take on substandard labour because you've won so much work because you priced it so cheap. So, like the last point, be specific about the sort of work you want to do and really stick to that for the, at the start and get your numbers right, man. It's like I mentioned at the beginning of the video like use a QS if you're getting started. So many people message me and say, oh, how do I get my pricing right? Just pay a QS. From the, from the first job, pay a QS, because what they'll do is they'll send you a breakdown of what they've charged. And if you want to, then you can use those rates and go and price, price, your, price your work yourself. Um, but don't be cheap. Don't be a busy fool, because you'll end up knee deep in shit and a genuine opportunity passes your buy. So it's about being really, really specific, man. I hope that helps someone. That's something that I've learned along the way. Cool. Number three is quite simply doing favours, all right? We always work with clients and try and help them wherever we can. But if you, say, do the substructure, chuck the substructure in for nothing, what will happen is the rest of the job, they're going to be like, when you have to put an extra and over in because they change something, they go, hang on a minute, you've already done me a favour, so you, you should do me another favour, all right? We, we're, we're always working with our clients. But when you do favours and you chuck favours in right at the start of jobs, a lot of the time it comes back and bites you in the ass. You know, if you, chuck, if you chuck in a couple of lads at cost to help them get forward, next time we try and put a day work bill in, a lot of the time it comes back and, like, well, hang on a minute, we had them at cost last time. It don't work. In our experience, it doesn't work, right? It's just everything straight down the line. It's a business transaction. Everyone needs to make money, all right? So lay off the favours. Oh, mate, that was short and sweet. I know you've got to do the outro. That's uh, them two retaining walls are in. The ground workers are going to crack on with the, the, the um, footings now. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Next week, I've got a meeting Monday about some land, and then the rest of the week's gonna be spent searching for it as well full time. It's a bit of a tricky one because obviously we're only a small setup. I'm off site pretty much full time now, um, doing the videos and searching for plots. So we're not gonna make massive money, if anything, on a brickwork company. But uh, if I if I land 100 or 200 grand profit in a plot, it's all cost effective and worthwhile. All right, I'm going to keep you posted on that as it gains momentum, which I'm sure it is. Um, I'll probably do a video next week on it, actually. Have a good week. I'll see you lot later. The comments are back on. We'll see how that goes. And um, I say we're really active on Instagram as well, so jump over and uh, follow us on Instagram. Latest potato.